All right, Stephen, I want to get into a specific stock. On Monday, you talked to us about buying ASML. You yeah. referenced it earlier in the show. Somebody screwed up. They accidentally, I guess, posted their numbers, whatever it was yesterday or Monday, the stock fell. What is your take on ASML and what you're doing with it now? Right. So, um, so with ASML, I said on Monday that I started an initial position because I thought this was going to be the quarter that they finally got back to growth after missing the last two quarters. In fact, that's not what happened. I don't take full positions anywhere near them, or even half size positions in front of earnings is always at risk. I'd rather buy up on confirming trends. But this was like a murder-suicide in reverse order. First, they screwed up by releasing it early, and then they so the numbers speak. weren't, yeah, the numbers, no one, people didn't like them. I don't want to say weren't the, good, that's editorialized. The numbers for the quarter were actually good except the order book. Last quarter, the order book was about five and a half billion. This quarter, it was less than half that. And then it was less than half their forecast also. So that's the issue. Now, the long Those are big issues. That's a major issue. So it was the guidance that they took down. Now, I understand that they report early, meaning like a couple of weeks, two to three weeks after the quarter closes, but you should have some sense of your business going forward, particularly in order book, because you yeah. know what's happening with your sales force. So that to me is a cardinal sin. I don't think they're really in touch with the companies they should be. So, look, yeah. I sold I sold a good chunk of it yesterday on the early release, uh, and I. But sold, if you liked it Monday, why not add it? It's cheaper, right? It's, it's le it Here's, costs less than it did when you liked it on Monday. Why not? Just uh, well, it does. It's not necessarily with less of an order book. I get it. Right. The valuation exactly. came down a little bit. So it went it's up, actually but. more expensive based yeah. upon their forecast for their earnings, which, as I said, they've now missed three quarters in a row. How do I have confidence in that? Um, so that's why I sold it. And yep. it was such a small position at this point after selling yesterday. It, it's, it's a reminder that I can do stupid things. Yep. And that was a stupid thing. I don't want to keep reminding myself. I mean, other people can remind you. <laughs> well, you're, you're very good at that, but you're not factually I'm based. I'm but here's I'm happy to help. But, but here's what I'd say. <laughs> it, took down, quickly. it took down the whole group, right? Yeah. It should only have taken down applied materials and the cap equipment people. Yeah. It shouldn't have companies. It shouldn't have taken down all the other sectors. Applied materials, LAM Research, yep. KLA Corp, semi-equipment. Look, automotive and industrial ch uh, chips are still struggling. Thank yep. heavens for AI, because the demand in the semiconductor industry is related specifically specifically to AI. Now, on the other side of this, do we continue to see clear delineation between those that have exposure to AI and others? Mm. I think the jury is still out on that. We need to see a little bit of a price recovery in some of the areas that we universally hit yesterday. But that's what should unfold in the coming quarters, where you're acknowledging if the semi has the AI exposure, you want to pay the premium there. If they don't, automotive, industrial, not yet recovered. If only there were enough energy generation ability to actually power all these data centers. Joe, it'd be a miracle. We're going to have 65,000 donkeys <laughs> towing something to hopefully, or just have no power to homes and we'll just power data Maybe centers. The utility sector can resolve You know, 25% of all Virginia's electricity goes to data centers. 25%. Yeah. All right.